I get quite excited every time I meet an amazing young woman who is doing amazing stuff when it comes to creating green jobs. As you know, Jacob's Ladder is all about creating green jobs and we are all about supporting women to be able to do that and to get the jobs. On today's episode, you get to hear an exciting story of an amazing young woman who is making a huge difference in several communities in Kenya. My name is Sela Bogonko, co-founder and CEO, Jacob's Ladder Africa, and this is Green Jobs Africa. Gloria, from the moment I watched your video, I said, I cannot wait to talk to you. I have to meet you. I have to tell you, you're doing an amazing job. So, I, I mean, I've, we've watched your video, but today on this show, as I mentioned earlier before we started, we get to delve deeper into you as a person, you as an entrepreneur, you as an innovator. So just get right into it. Introduce yourself. Tell us a bit about where this whole Sisal story started from. <laughs> Yeah. Um, thank you for the introduction. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited to be here. Um, actually, how everything started is because I really wanted to do something different. Um, my grandmother used to weave baskets. Okay. Um, ideally, what Shaba we do is we work with rural communities to hand make sisal baskets. Mm -hmm. And the innovative thing about Shaba is we use a tech-powered platform to do this. Mm -hmm. So ideally, um, you could watch in the previous videos, yeah. um, the entire system or the value chain that Chaba has. Mm -hmm. So direct from the farm all the way to a finished product. Yeah. Um, I was kind of hoping you'd bring me like a souvenir, but I have to coming. buy. <laughs> <laughs> I have to buy one for me. Uh -huh. We actually bring you out two new products. So okay. I think you'd love the new ones that are coming. Sounds good. Yes. First of all, education, um, or was this maybe like a hobby that you used to do and then you went into it? Or did you study something else and then start this? Uh, let's start with school and then we'll get into the business bit of it. Okay. I did something completely different. Okay. I went to Strathmore. I did my undergraduate in hospitality management. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like worlds of pants? <laughs> exactly. Uh, and my, my, my dad, when he hears this question, he's always like, don't mention me there. Because um, I always wanted to do something with business. Mm -hmm. uh, but during my study or during that time that you're trying, still trying to figure things out, he was like, okay, Gloria, I know there's, there's this new course coming up in Strathmore. I think mm. you should do it. So I was like, you know what? I don't have a solid plan, so why not? Yeah. Um, but the good thing about it is they had a unit on sustainability. Okay. Which was the one unit that I really, really enjoyed. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully you passed. I did. I had to. It's important. Uh -huh. um, so with that unit, they were just educating us about sustainable practices, especially within the tourism ecosystem. Mm -hmm. But the practices goes beyond the tourism. It's a lifestyle. Mm -hmm. uh, you as an individual, how are you more sustainable? Mm -hmm. How do you encourage other people to be more sustainable in their practices? Mm -hmm. And also, um, how are you also able to create an impact within the environment? Mm -hmm. So that was one of the units that I loved. In fact, I did my final paper on sustainable practices within mm -hmm. the hotels. Mm -hmm. um, but then after that, I went into employment, mm -hmm. uh, whereby I worked um, in, within the hotel industry, yeah. but didn't last. <laughs> Honestly, I, I think I lasted for like six months and mm -hmm. I really wanted to do something within the sustainable yeah. aspect. I just didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. So I got a job uh, with a company called Solar Freeze. Mm -hmm. So they work with rural communities to provide cold storage facilities. Mm -hmm. And for me, I was like, okay, the road trees, you know, uh, yeah. it's something different. Yeah. And that concept of how do you provide cold storage facilities was mm -hmm. new to me. Yeah. Um, and with my time there, I got to really understand like how does a startup work? Mm -hmm. How, like what is sustainability? Mm -hmm. What is impact? Because mm -hmm. when you work in a business that is green, mm -hmm. you get to go like a step further. How do you measure your impact? Mm -hmm. um, how do you communicate mm -hmm. uh, what you're doing yeah. across a wide variety of audiences? Mm -hmm. So I got my experience there. Mm -hmm. um, how, you said, for how long did you work there? The two, almost three years. Okay. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I was also volunteering for them while I was, I was in school. Okay. So I just transitioned yeah. um, into their operations. Mm -hmm. But then 
with Shaba, no, that's where the story comes in. Mm-hmm. Uh, my grandmother used to weave baskets. Okay. Um, I don't know if I showed the team uh, when they were at the workshop. Mm-hmm. I have one of her baskets that she used to make. Mm-hmm. It's quite colorful. It has green, red. <laughs> <laughs> the usual Kyondo type? Yeah, yeah okay. exactly. Mm-hmm. And it, it's quite funny because she made it around more than 20 years ago mm-hmm. and it's still functional. Mm. And she only not only make it for herself, but mm-hmm. she was also gifting it to others, her in-laws. Mm-hmm. And she would organize also women within her communities to sell it off to other of takers. Yeah. But then she never really got the benefit of it. So if you think back, that's in the a benefit. You mean economic benefit? Economic benefit. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because ideally, where she comes from, it's quite an arid and semi-arid area. So you really can't depend on agriculture. Mm. So. Um, that's why they started weaving. Mm -hmm. And also weaving was part of their heritage craft. Mm -hmm. So at that point, um, I I, I got to understand the problem that they were facing. Mm -hmm. So they make beautiful baskets, but they have this challenge of inaccessibility to market. They'd sell their basket for, gosh, less than a dollar. Mm -hmm. And then it goes to the market 10 times its value yeah. without any like many African products, you know? Exactly. Yeah. Without even training, you know, mm. there's something that you could add on to the communities mm. and it wasn't really seen. Mm-hmm. So after that, I remember now the first visit that I had mm-hmm. with the community that was in Machakos. Mm-hmm. Um, I was still trying to figure out like what exactly do I want to do within the space. Yeah. So I remember I had a conversation with my dad we were together in Machakos and he was like, I told him I want to go for the community visit. I got my community. I'm going tomorrow. Yeah. He asked me, um, do you even know the language? I was like, that's, that's not the, that's that's the irrelevant. Language. Exactly. <laughs> He's like, do you know how to locate the communities? I'm like, Google Maps. He's yeah. like, he looked at me, he laughed. <laughs> He's like, know? fine, we'll go tomorrow. So... In my head, I thought it was like a 30 minute drive from mm-hmm. Machakos, mm-hmm. but it was around an hour and a half. <laughs> so, welcome to community <laughs> development. <laughs> it was quite interesting mm-hmm. because along the, the way, I didn't want to admit I was wrong yeah. in terms of like the distance yeah. and also the communication barrier, but he was quite um, positive about it. He's mm-hmm. like, okay, Gloria, you need to. He was just give me, giving me a few pointers. Mm-hmm. So we went to our first community visit. He stayed in the car and I did the rest of the thing. Mm-hmm. So I got to the So community. what do you mean by community visit? Like, were you targeting a specific community for a specific reason or? For, the, for the, my first visit, I... Was it in relation to the sisal production? Yes and no. Okay. So within the communities, there are, there are different communities doing different crafts across Kenya, mm-hmm. but a huge number of them do weaving. Mm-hmm. So it's either weaving or beading mm-hmm. majority of the time. Yeah. So the easiest community I got was doing weaving. Mm-hmm. So within their sector, that's how I got to know and understand what they were doing. Mm-hmm. So I I went there, um, I had a set of like questions, questions just to yeah. validate if the problem actually exists. Mm-hmm. So we're just going through um, who are your off takers, mm. what's the price point, mm. uh, what added value benefit do you have? And this was immediately like after COVID. So there was no work that they were getting from yeah. international buyers or yeah. domestic. Mm. So we had that time just to have a conversation of, okay, what works, what doesn't and why not? Mm. So that was the first community visit that I had that actually shifted things mm-hmm. because in my perspective, I was thinking about, okay, get their product to market and that's it. But then you get to understand there's so much more you could do. Um, because there was a problem with the infrastructure, like how do you get the product in Machakos um, to Nairobi in the right quality, right consistency, mm-hmm. but also in terms of the economic benefit of the craft. Mm-hmm. Um, are we able to provide trainings? Are we able to give higher profit margins? So would you say this is where you found your the, um, the opportunity where the, there was a challenge or there was an issue and then you began to see there's a solution you could bring to the table? Yes, okay. yes. It's mm-hmm. always that aspect of you need to talk to your customers mm-hmm. or your users to mm-hmm. understand if the problem exists and mm-hmm. also what opportunities are actually there. Mm-hmm. So that was the one community that gave me the light bulb. 
and after the visit mm -hmm. they were like okay gloria thank you for coming thank you for the research yeah. but could you do more yeah. could you help us get our products even to nairobi yeah so i took it as a challenge mm -hmm. and be like and i was like okay let me let me see um, but all this while you were still working in the in the organization you were in I had quits. Oh, you had quits. Yeah. <laughs> That's why I had such quits. You start finding something to do. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you start um, this, you know, you go back after this community visit and you start thinking, what can you do? Yeah. But they already have the product. So here, probably it's more about logistics or get to market sort of like strategy. How was, was that your intervention or did you see more? The first intervention was getting them to market so yeah. logistics. Mm -hmm. But then you get to understand, you'd get the product to market, mm -hmm. but there's an issue around consistency, mm -hmm. quality and design. Mm -hmm. Because again, communities within rural, rural settings typically don't have access to the internet, so they don't know the trends. Yeah. So this year's colors will be different from next year. Yeah. Yeah. So how do you ensure that everything is as per mm -hmm. the trend so that they get a more competitive advantage? Mm -hmm. And also, if you place an order today and you place it next month, will the quality be the same? Mm -hmm. So as I watched your story and tracked your progress around how you're doing the size holds, the number of women you're employing, you have operations, I think, in five, is it five communities, which is pretty amazing. Um, talk to us about your challenges as an entrepreneur, you know, from starting to scaling, like what are those, like your top three challenges that you faced in the journey uh, of entrepreneurship? I usually look at my challenges in terms of three phases. So mm -hmm. the first, while I was starting. Mm -hmm. So it was quite difficult explaining to people what I wanted to do. Yeah. Because again, you don't have, you don't have a physical product outside the traditional, you're taking, you're producing products and then taking them to market. Yeah. But there was so much more. Mm -hmm. So the challenge was how do I get more people on board? Mm -hmm. So people to de develop the tech because my background is not in tech. Mm -hmm. People to help And just to be clear, me. for those who haven't watched the video, who will still go back and have to watch it, the tech is the platform you use to sell the product, right? Yes, so it's a platform where we use to manufacture. Mm -hmm. So it organizes our communities and also distribution whereby retailers who stock the products can do so within our platform. Yeah. So it's very specific to manufacturing and distribution. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So your first phase of challenge at the startup level. Yes, uh, it was getting people to see your vision and yeah. also understand what you're doing. Mm -hmm. Then after getting a few people to understand, there's always the challenge of financing. Mm -hmm. So how do you, you have this idea, you have a few people working on it, but it's not, a, it's a minimum viable product. It's not the best yeah. <laughs> version of the, of the idea, right? Yeah. Um, so at that point is whereby um, getting other people who have more financing to look at what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So at that point was understanding, okay, where does Shaba actually fall? Mm. Um, are we within the climate? Are we within tech? Are we within fashion? Are we mm. within the tourism industry? Mm. So having that understanding of where we fall or where we fit mm -hmm. um, actually was actually the main brain because everyone was like, okay, Gloria, are you a fashion brand? I'm like, <laughs> I'm what like, are you doing? Yeah. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. You'd go into a tech uh, conversation and be like, so what tech do you do? Is it yeah. the website? So you're like, no, we, we, it's more mm -hmm. than that. Um, then outside of that, mm -hmm. now it was how do we scale the solution? Mm -hmm. Because we already validated that the problem is there. Mm -hmm. We have a functional product. Mm -hmm. We got a bit of funding to test out what we're doing. Yeah. It works. Mm -hmm. So how do we scale it across the different communities? Mm -hmm.